Well, wonderful to catch up on the other side of the world with an Australian sporting legend in Andrew Hoy, who is an Olympic champion. Seven times he's gone to Olympic Games. He's a VRC member. He's a passionate racing man. Andrew, brilliant to catch up, mate. How are you? Yeah, very well, Joe. It's great to be um, able to speak with you. And um, albeit on the other side of the world, I feel as if I'm, I definitely am Australian. And so uh, I, it's just that it's my job and my sport that keeps me here in Europe. I was trying to think about how long you've been in the UK for now. Based, it must be well over 20 years, isn't it? Yes, I I got residency for the United Kingdom the beginning of '93, so oh, that's wow. um, some time ago now, and um, and it's it's only because of the the sport because Australia is just definitely home for me. Tell us about your uh, upbringing, uh, and you can click your heels and think uh, there's no place like home, is there? Uh, describe Andrew Hoy as a youngster in Australia. A youngster. Well, when I, I grew up in a little town called Kalken, well, just outside, my parents had a property there and still uh, still the family property is there. And um, just north of Albury, 40 kilometres. And I grew up on a farm and started riding when I was a, a young boy. One thing led to the next where I borrowed a pony from my uncle and then went to started in the pony club and then did rodeo riding and camp rafting and so many different forms of riding. And it was at the age of 19 that I was actually offered my first um, trip, to, which was to America for world championships. And it would be remarkable to go to an eighth Olympic Games. Your Olympic journey is just incredible. That's the only word I can come up uh, with it. Take us through your very first Olympics, your feeling when you finally got that blazer and, uh, you know, years of dreaming it. You might have thought you might have been on a bike, but in the end you're on a horse. <laughs> Describe this uh, remarkable start to your Olympic journey. So Los Angeles was my first Olympic team. Yeah. And it was just unbelievable. It, for me to describe it's <clears throat> you... You're representing your country. I had no idea what it was like to walk into an Olympic stadium with the Australian team around you and being yeah. part of the Australian team. And that that was very, very special. And I was a little bit daunted by the whole thing. And uh, But I, I had a, a good performance there. And so and then the journey just continued on where I did world championships two years later and then Olympic Games two years later. And... And like it's, I'm I'm very very privileged to have had that opportunity. And albeit that I've been the one in the competition arena, I have not been. There have been a lot of people people that have supported me. And when I say a lot of people, it's it goes back to where your childhood starts. And I, I was only talking with someone the other day. You must never forget where you actually started. Talking about longevity, I was just thinking there, when LA is your very first Olympic Games, that was dominated by Carl Lewis, who won four Olympic gold medals. He's been retired for 24 years. <laughs> he retired <laughs> after, after he won a gold medal in the long jump in Atlanta. So he'd gone four Olympics in a row and then he retired. That's 24 years ago and you're still going strong. Yes. I know. Like it, I'm, I'm very privileged to be a, in a sport where I actually can continue yeah. on and like it's sure Tokyo 21 uh, and um, I'm even looking at horsepower for 2024 as well in Paris so I, I, I'm just really excited with the horsepower that I've got. For us mere mortals describe winning an Olympic gold medal. Describe winning an Olympic gold medal. It's that is an interesting one because <clears throat> when I go to Olympic Games, for me, it's the time when I feel the least amount of pressure. And why do I describe that? I describe that that way because I go there. The 
transport is all organized for myself to get there, for the horse to get there. When I arrive, I'm collected. And so I'm collected by the Australian team management. I don't have to organize accommodation. I don't have to organize the veterinarian. I don't have to organize the physiotherapist. I don't have to organize a, a doctor. Everything is absolutely organized. All I have to think about is what time do I get out of bed in the morning? How long is it going to take me to walk to the dining hall? Then how long do I need for breakfast? What bus am I going to take? And then I get to the venue. I've got one horse to work with for the day and to focus on. And I've got a team coach there for dressage and for jumping. And so all of the pressure is taken away of the day-to-day -day things that you need to organize. And so you can just focus on your on your program. But then when you actually have the success and you're standing on the dais there is absolute excitement that you have won a medal for your country and been part of that performance which is the biggest sporting platform in the world you see the australian flag go up you listen to the anthem there are so many emotions that go through your body of excitement and joy, relief that the competition is complete. And for me, I very much remember when we, when I was in my first gold medal team, which was in Barcelona in 92, there was a feeling of loneliness. And why do I say loneliness? It's because there were so many people that I thought should be standing on the dais with me. Um, amongst them, a loaded question, amongst all your Olympic memories, is there one that stands out? To, I've got a gut feeling there might be, but is there one that stands out? Yeah. Look, I've, I've thought about this a lot, and this has been a question that's been asked a lot to me. And I keep on going back to, to Sydney. The thing that made Sydney so special, and it's not just about the performances of every athlete and about the performances that I do, but it's it was the way that the rest of the world were welcomed into Sydney. Yeah. And I know it was now 20 years ago, but for those people who were actually at Sydney and did experience the Olympic Games experience, it was the volunteers and it was the people that hosted the international athletes and officials and also spectators that made Sydney so special. Tell us about your love of racing because you are a regular at the Lexus Melbourne Cup. Why? Yes. For me, as the, um, the Melbourne Cup is a sporting event it's the it's the biggest equestrian sporting event definitely in Australia and almost in the world. <clears throat> it is the most number one, there is the love for the horses. <clears throat> but what the VRC do so well is they really look after every category of person that wants to come yeah. and view the racing. Whether you want to stand on the lawn and watch it from there, whether you want to be in the in a grandstand, whether you want to be in a corporate box, there is something for everyone. And that is very, very special. It's mm -hmm. just I'm I can't I believe my first Melbourne Cup was around 1992. So Ooh. we're going back a long time. Can and you, ever since Can then, you remember it? Was it it was it wet and who won? <laughs> that I can't. I can remember the year the Kiwi won the Melbourne Cup. Oh, God. Well, that's uh, 1983. That's a long, long time ago. No, not 83. Was it? Yes, yeah. it was. Yeah. So if you went in yes. 92, I reckon you, you went sub zero was uh, old Subby who's done amazing things for yes. the Melbourne Cup and for racing one in 1992. But it's the Grace Cup. Sub Zero holding Viander across at bay. And Sub Zero wins the Melbourne Cup by two lengths. Second Viander across a length and a half away. Third Castle Town. 
And then in 93, the race changed forever when an Irish raider came over in vintage crop and then suddenly the race was totally different. Yeah, yeah. And I was definitely there for for that. And, um, yeah, and also Sub-Zero now that you mentioned that. So, yes, because that's interesting if – because the year that Kiwi won the Melbourne Cup, I was actually um, at the Melbourne Cup with Mark Phillips and we were going to New Zealand the next day. Wow. And I said to him, he said, Andrew, what what horse should we back? I said, I don't know. But I said, there's a horse called Kiwi and if we go to New Zealand tomorrow and we haven't put money on Kiwi and he actually wins, I said, we are going to look really silly. Kiwi, Kiwi will beat them all. It's come from last. Kiwi, Kiwi's won the Melbourne Cup, a blistering performance. <laughs> so we backed Kiwi, and anyway, Kiwi ended up winning. And then on that particular trip, I bought a horse in New Zealand, and I called that horse Kiwi, and that horse took me to World Championships and Olympic Games. That is a fascinating. So, so are you, is it right that you're a VRC member too? You've yes, made up yes. Proud and passionate. Yeah, I, I, I've been uh, been a VRC member for many many years now. And albeit that I've been a guest of the VRC on so many occasions into the committee room, and, and that is very, very special. I still will stay a VRC member. Even Philippa, our daughter, who is just over two and a half, she is a VRC member as well. And she's been to two Melbourne Cups already. So it's, and that for me was another new experience of going to the Melbourne. Yeah up with children and um, we took um, Philippa to the ch- where the children can play and it was a wonderful experience on the on the Thursday to be there just with the children and experience it from their perspective as well. Everyone at the VRC, Andrew, is barracking for you so hard, mate. We'd love to see you once again come back for another Melbourne Cup and then to go to an eight Olympic Games would just be breathtaking. Uh, thanks so much for spending time with us. Get back and uh, make sure the staff are working hard. Keep improving. Ten little one percenters and love to Stephanie as well. Thank you very much. Right. All the best to you. Take care. Ciao, ciao.